What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a countdown timer inside Resolve 16 with no plugins required. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos that help you guys grow as creators. So if you have not already, click that subscribe button and tag along. Uh, today I'm gonna to be making this countdown timer inside Resolve 16. I put out a video recently on color correction in 90 seconds or under, and I had a little timer in the bottom corner. I got a couple messages from people asking how I accomplished that, so that's what we're gonna to do today. So let's jump inside Resolve 16 and we'll go from there. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is right click on this and you're gonna make a new fusion composition. We're gonna go ahead and name this timer for now. And I am gonna make this, let's say, 10 seconds should be fine. 24 frames, hit enter, and create. We're gonna grab that fusion composition, drag it down to our editor. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so we can see. While I'm hovered over on top of it, we're gonna hop inside fusion. And this is where everything's gonna happen. First thing we're gonna do is click a background and a rectangle. We're gonna drag that up here just to make it a little more tidy. I'm gonna take the background and I'm gonna hit two just to display it on my screen, make it a little bit bigger for you guys to see. I'm gonna select a color that I like. I think that's pretty good. Let's do something like a, a bluish teal. That should be fine. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump inside the rectangle and we are gonna make the height, uh, let's do about there should be fine. Then we're gonna click on the background, we're gonna hit shift space bar, and we are going to look for a coordinate space. We're gonna add that. Then over here under the inspector, we are gonna go from rectangular to polar to the opposite, polar to rectangular. I'm gonna take this, drag it up to the screen so I can see, and you can see it created this half circle. Have that changed, we're gonna go back to the rectangle and we're gonna change the width to 0.1 instead of 0.5 and it will create a circle. It looks a little odd, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the background and we're gonna click on the second tab on the image and we're gonna create the width to 1080. If you can't do this, make sure your auto resolution is unchecked. We're gonna also make this 1080. And now we have a perfect circle. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our rectangle and we are gonna go to the very beginning when we're gonna want it to start animating. I am going to click one to set it right where I know it's gonna start on the width. I'm gonna add a keyframe, then I'm gonna scroll to the very end of it and I am going to make that zero. Now, if we scrub through it, you can see the animation is starting to go and it's counting down. The only problem is it's not starting from one side to the other and it looks a little wonky. If that's what you like and you like the circle is kind of eating itself away, then that's how you would do it. But I'm just not a personal fan of that. So we're gonna scroll to the very beginning and on the center, we're gonna change that from 0.5 to one. And now you can see it just starts on one side and goes all the way over. The only problem with that is, is now we only have a half circle. So to fix that, we're gonna scroll to the very beginning yet again, and under the width where we added the 1.0 keyframe size, we're gonna change that to a two. And now you have a complete full circle that's eating itself away. And it should come all the way to the end. Now that that's looking good, we are gonna add a time countdown. So we're gonna take all these nodes, we're just gonna drag them to the side for now. We'll deal with those in just a minute. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our media out up to the screen so I have it. I am going to add a text node. So I'm gonna click text node right here. And I'm also going to add a merge node. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna attach these two just so we can see what's going on. Again, pull that down a little bit so we can see what's going on. What we're gonna do is go over here to our style text. We are gonna right click on it and we are gonna go down to expressions to drive this home with and animate it. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see. We're gonna click on the text underneath here. Let me delete both of those. Then we are going to add time, hit enter. And now you can see we've got our frames going on as we scrub through and I don't want that. I want it to count down, I don't want it to count up. So 
in front of time, we are going to minus how many frames we have in this actual fusion composition. So we see 239 frames, so we're gonna hit 239 minus time, hit enter, and now we can see it starts counting down. That's starting to get to the direction I want it to go, but I don't want to do frames, I want to do actual seconds. To accomplish that, we're going to have to divide it by the frame rate we have done this composition in. So we're going to add another set of parentheses, one at the beginning and one at the end. In between the last two, we are going to divide it. We're going to divide it by the frame rate, so divide 23.976. Hit enter, and now we can see it's counting by seconds. Awesome, now you can see that it's actually counting down by seconds instead of frames, which is what we're going for. The only thing I don't like about it is all this gibberish at the end, so to fix that, we're gonna click back on our text, go here, we're gonna add another set of a parentheses, there and there. We're gonna scroll all the way back here in between the first two, and we are gonna add math.floor, all undercase, hit enter, and now it has taken all that crap away. And you can see that it's counting down. I'm not really sure why it's missing a 10 second mark here at the beginning, so to fix that, an easy way is just to click in between these two parentheses, and we're gonna hit plus one, enter, and now it adds that in, and we can see that it started at 10. I have done this a whole bunch of times and I'm not really sure why it's having that issue right now. Maybe a bug in Resolve, I don't know. But a quick fix is just adding that plus whatever. Now the only problem is it's gonna end on one instead of zero, which I'm okay with. But if you want it to end on zero, the quickest way I figured out how to fix that is go to edit and we're just gonna drag this out a second right here. And now you can see it ends on zero. I, however, am going to leave it on one because that's fine for me right now. We're going to jump back into Fusion and we're going to highlight these and bring them over here and we're going to connect our coordinate space to our merge. I'm going to drag this up here and make sure I am set. That looks good. And if everything is correct, it should be counting down according to the timer. Now keep in mind, these two are not linked together. You need to pay attention when you're adding keyframes and if you need to go back and delete them, I have hit on that in other videos. I'll leave some descriptions below on some other videos or up in the card above. Uh, go check those out if you need to learn how to delete keyframes. I'm not really gonna dive into that today. I am however gonna add a transform node, so we're gonna click that and I'm gonna hit shift and my mouse at the same time, drop it in. And now we can size this whole thing down if we need to. Actually, I'm gonna click on the text and size it up a little bit. It's a little small for my taste. I'm gonna go back to the transform. We're gonna size this down. Let's just say we want it just in the corner. So we're gonna kind of bring it over here. That should be pretty good. The last thing I like to do is I like to change the color to make it look like something is about to happen. You do not need to do this step, but I prefer to do this. And this is how I did it. We're gonna scroll back to four seconds, should be fine, somewhere around there. We're gonna click on the background, we're gonna go back to the color, and we're gonna add a keyframe right here, right on the color tab. We're gonna go over to three seconds, should be fine, and we're gonna move this to red. Now if we scrub back through, we see that it kind of turns the red like something's happening and the timer's getting closer and closer to exploding or ending or whatever you wanna say. Hovering over our first keyframe, we're gonna go to our text and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna add a keyframe and then we're gonna scroll over to where the red is about there. We're gonna click on the color. We're gonna drag it to red, hit okay. And now, they both do the same thing and turn red. It's kind of just a cool little effect to spice it up towards the end to really accentuate that the time is running out. And yeah, guys, that's basically how you do just a simple countdown timer. You can do this as long as you want. I did a 90 second one on my last video. Uh, you could do this 10 minutes long if you really wanted to. It just kind of depends on you. It's really not that hard. The expressions can be a bit much but once you kind of start diving into that and understanding it, it's not as complicated as you think. 
But that'll do it for me today, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment below on some new tutorials you want to see coming out to resolve. I would love to hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. I'm the Iron Giant. You guys are amazing. I'm out.